it's really quiet at the moment and I don't know why my voice was so high then but <laughs> yeah it's really quiet I was thinking about this on the on the drive-in before um, we met to re- record today's episode and um, currently been recorded in the middle of August mm. and it's it's yeah it's just quiet and, and I was thinking about this and getting a little bit Mm, this is a bit itchy, you know. I, mm. I've gone from three, four, five. You start to calls. panic. Yeah, I don't know. I shouldn't do. You know, I, I, I literally gone for you know three to five, probably four or five client calls every week and a couple of meetings to maybe one or two a week, mm. and kind of like creating meetings for the sake of meetings to keep <laughs> myself busy. And you know, it it it's it interesting because I started thinking about this and then realised that actually. There are two things going on at the moment. Yep. One is that clients are on holiday. Prospects too. Yep. Um, the other thing is that I know of a number of clients who are actually doing what they should be doing, which is recharging mm. themselves. And I can think of three who I've said, right, should we catch up next week? And they've gone, no, let's just wait three weeks. Let's wait. So they're weeks. working, but they're just not working at flat out yes there and I, I think if, uh, certainly a couple of them <coughs> uh, certainly a couple of them have literally just gone do you know I, I I just don't want to think about the business other than doing anything that's essential I need a break mm. I need some time off and I just wondered whether there was anything in are we doing enough to create quiet time for ourselves often enough? Because mm. I can think of one person specifically for whom I think if she didn't have this time off, she would be, she'd burn out. Yeah. I could see it in her behaviours. She was really, really close to it. So hopefully yeah. this time will have recharged her and stuff. Mm. And the problem with burning out and not taking proper time off is that you think you're invincible and you just keep mm. going until you can't mm. go anymore and for me especially this time of year um, I always used August to plan my year end is August so mm. I always go in August look at what's happening September onwards um, I probably will look at January onwards because to be honest I know what I'm doing September October December because I did it last January but there's, mm. there's a few financial things that we'll look at and budgets and so on and so yeah. forth but one of the key things when we plan, and when I say we, it's Kay and I, mm-hmm. the first thing we do, um, and, and we normally go to the caravan and do this um, because there's space and we're away and mm. we've got perspective and objectivity and I'm not working, is we put all our holidays into the diary. Mm-hmm. That is the first thing that goes in the diary. Whether we know where we're going or not is irrelevant. We will just put space in our diaries to go away Mm -hmm. that enables Kay to figure out how much holiday she needs to take and book from work whether she needs to buy any extra holiday take some unpaid whatever that is I'll then put in the kind of pertinent personal dates for me so that used to be weekends with Jace but now she's living with us it doesn't really matter Mm -hmm. Um, so now weekends without her (laughs) Um, no Um, you know uh, I'll put in things like golf tournaments that I want to play in I'll put in things like trips that I know that will happen with other friends of mine so mm. spin around holidays but it's all the pertinent personal stuff uh, when the QPR games are you know on the weekends because um, I don't want to miss them and yeah. don't have excuses um, all those sorts of things and then we'll put in and, and this might sound counterintuitive to other people but then what will go into my diary are the key dates for the business mm-hmm. so campaign dates dates for our locker room meetings um, quarterly meetings, that that sort of stuff, and then then I'll put in the kind of minor business stuff, um, delivery, when I have lunch, <laughs> um, those sorts of things. But so it, it, there's this kind of, you, you've, I'm sure you've seen the story of the you know the jar. And yeah. You start with the big rocks first, start, and it's, yeah, it's the very business. much around the big rocks first, mm-hmm. then the stuff that's less important, and then finally fill it all within the minutiae and the sand mm-hmm. that kind of dribbles in between. And I think the trouble is, is that a lot of overwhelm comes from people starting with the sand. Mm-hmm. They're so busy trying to do all the little things 
that they lose sight of what's important because they haven't planned what's important and put it in the diary first. Yeah. I, I get a bit ranty about this, but I just don't think there's any excuse for not having time off in your business. Mm. It is the easiest thing in the world to buy a wall planner, okay, and go, right, I'm going to work for 12 weeks, have two weeks off. I'm going to work for 12 weeks, I'm going to have two weeks off. Mm. I'm going to work for 12 weeks, I'm going to have two weeks off. That's my year. Yeah. Three times 12, 36. Yeah. Uh, whatever, you know, a plus but, year. But people don't do that. They don't, not many people plan their holidays out, n- maybe not even 12 months ahead, but even six months ahead, go, right, I'm going to take a Friday off and have myself a long weekend because I know that I'm going to need to charge, yeah. uh, recharge. Um, well, that's, that's the other thing I do in the winter. So from probably October half term, as it used to be, so the first week of November mm-hmm. through to uh, end of March, mm-hmm. I will have Friday afternoons off. Mm. I don't feel like I need to at the moment yeah. because the evenings are longer. Longer, yeah. So I get my sunshine. But at least once a week, I want to have some time for myself. So why do you think people don't prioritise themselves then? Yeah, and I'll clarify here, this is not just about prioritising yourself, but prioritising what's important for the business as well. Yeah. Um, because you are your business's greatest asset. Yeah. If you can't function, the business can't function. Mm. For most, there will be people listening to mm. this who've got teams, teams yeah. and all the rest of it, and hopefully you've got a business that doesn't work, mm. that, sorry, that does work yeah. when you're not there. And mm-hmm. ultimately, arguably, that's a great goal yeah. for many businesses. But if you're running a lifestyle business where you're the majority shareholder, you're not accountable to anybody else. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's micro, it's service-based, whatever it is. You maybe love doing what you're doing, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean you should be beholden to doing it when everybody else and your clients tell you to do it. Mm-hmm. And, and that's just about training people. Do you think it's about training them themselves as well, though? Because I, I know quite a few business owners who almost feel like they can't allow themselves to have time off because it's too important that they're there, that, you know, nothing will happen if they're not there. Um, to the point where they, you know, they're always on and they're always the person who answers the email or answers the phone or does the thing. And, you know, even on weekends they're working because if, you know, that's their time to catch up because in the week they've been doing the work and now they've got to do the business owner part as well. So they work their weekends and they work into the evenings. Do you think that, you know, that that's part of the problem as well is that they're not valuing that working on the business how, how do they solve that there's there's a great book i read recently and i've shared it with a couple of clients called it doesn't have to be this crazy at work mm. and, it, and it does challenge that whole just because somebody sent you an email mm. doesn't mean i have to reply it does challenge the whole why do we have 1450 meetings a day for the sake of having a meeting yeah you know it it, it does challenge the guilt complex around business owners feeling that um, if they don't work harder than everybody else they're going to left behind mm-hmm. there, there are people listening to this who will will um, will see see a direct correlation between success and how many hours they put in yeah was one of my goals and you, you know what I'm like I don't like mm. to impose goals on anybody else but for me one of my values which has become a goal is how do I get the success that I want working as few hours <laughs> as I possibly can yeah because then uh, the, the business is functioning to my mind mm. more effectively I don't get burned out I'm yeah. giving greater value to fewer people um, there's there's less pressure on me mm. to, to deliver that and, and maybe you know, we talked in a previous podcast about, um, you know, having made mistakes in the past and failure mm-hmm. and, and what you can learn from that. And, and it might be that because I've burned myself out in the past and that led to quite a traumatic failure of, of, of business that I'm, I'm afraid of putting myself in that position mm-hmm. again. And that's OK mm-hmm. if that fear is driving a better way of working now. I don't think I'm any less successful now than I was back then, but I'm a lot happier I'm yeah. a lot freer. Yeah. And I guess to answer your question, it's it's what stops people is probably societal pressure. Mm. I think at no other time in history um, has comparisonitis been mm. more prevalent. 
you you can pick up your phone and within seconds be bombarded through five, six, seven different channels with how unbelievably successful other people are. Apparently. Apparently. And that, because it's innate within us to want to belong, Mm -hmm. because we are innately competitive by nature, otherwise you don't survive. And that's not survival of the fittest, fittest, because that can be, you know, most adaptive or whatever. But it's in us to be noticed. It's in Mm. us to be um, hierarchical and better than other people. And and therefore we, we, we chase what other people curate Mm -hmm. rather than chasing what we curate for ourselves yeah and i think there's a huge there's a huge distinction huge distinction it's too easy to go onto instagram or tiktok (laughs) and and see other people's lives that are 60 seconds Mm -hmm that's taken them three hours to record yeah that's in the middle of a day where actually they're feeling worse than death Mm. and they're having a horrendous time Mm. why don't they show that bit well it's interesting because actually some of the content creators on tiktok in particular who are having the most success are actually the people who are being real who are saying i'm putting this out there because i'm sure other people must feel this too or if if I was watching people's content, I would want to know that someone else was out there. I'm not having a good time right now. Mm. I'm struggling. It's really interesting that there is beginning to be a shift towards being more real and less curated. How much of that, though, is then putting it out there and other people looking at it and going, I now feel better about myself because you're in a bad place? I mean, I'm, undoubtedly, there's going to be people who are like that. Mm. But I think, I think a greater proportion, and this is just my impression, is a greater proportion of people feel a relief that they don't have to keep up with that level of perfect anymore. That that people are being successful by being real, by being imperfect. Yeah, absolutely. Imperfect. Success. But it, it's interesting because <laughs> title of a book that isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because. You know, this ties into so many things that we've said in the past about learning from your mistakes and about how failure isn't necessarily a bad thing. And, you know, and taking that time in the summer, was, um, I think we talked about it before, but last year I was diagnosed with lupus and I started on medication and felt better quite quickly. And I've had little ups and downs in that year. But this last week, it occurred to me on Thursday night that I was actually in the midst of of the worst flare that I've had since I got diagnosed. And I'd missed all the obvious, looking back and going, oh, well, that was a sign and that was an early warning sign, but I'd missed them all because I hadn't had to think about it for Mm. a year. Mm. And I'd maybe got a little bit blasé about, well, you know, I'm taking medication now, so it's all fine. And I realised that I'd I'd come back from the States, I was jet-lagged, I'd had an overnight flight where I hadn't slept, I couldn't get back in my sleep routine, so straight away that should have been a warning sign for me because the lack of sleep causes you know stress on your body but I then decided that because I'd been away I was now back and I was going to fit in a chiro appointment and a mass a massage an appointment and my physio appointment and a doctor's appointment and a dentist appointment and I spent the week literally running around like a blue ass fly yeah. trying to fit in For all this stuff to, to catch up yeah. and I just I, oh and then I thought well, now I've had my hip done and, I'm, and the doctor says I can go back to the gym and back to some, some activity. I'm going to go out dancing. And I think that was the final straw, really. And I didn't do actually a lot of physical thing, but I was out later. Yeah. And my body just went... Stop. Nope, I'm done. And literally, I had to spend the week... Well, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I spent in bed, sleeping. So it's, it's, it's really interesting that you recognised it. At least you recognised it. Yeah, yeah. At some point. <laughs> a little bit late, but yeah. yes, I did. And, and that's the thing, is it's a learning experience, but... But I, th- I, I just, you know, coming back to this whole principle of um, just recognising earlier that you need yeah. time out. You, you recognised it early enough, later than you'd have liked. Later than I'd have enough. liked, but early enough that I'm not collapsing. Yeah. And the key bit is there that there are triggers. Yeah. That although, okay, you chose, you didn't recognise them... 
that you were able to reflect and go, okay, yeah. may, may, now maybe what I need to do is put in alerts. Well, what was interesting manage is... Manage those triggers. Yeah, absolutely. And what was interesting is that a year ago, I would have almost berated myself and said, well, why can't you just keep going? Everyone else your age is mm. doing this, this and this, and you just need to push harder. It's a little bit like what you're saying about, you know, being at the gym and, and not being able to to um, do as much as you'd like. And and I had pushed and pushed and pushed. And this time I was like, OK, I, I, I recognised it later than I would have liked, but I recognised it. Yes. And immediately I thought, what do I need to do? The, the only thing that at, at, at that point that can help is extreme rest, that you just... At you that point, you have to stop, yeah. you have to let your body catch up, and it will catch up and it will be fine, but that you can't, there's nothing you can take, you can't, there's no magic pill, right? And um, and I'd had some things over the weekend that I'd planned in and I cancelled them all, mm -hmm. and that was a massive for me, because a year ago I wouldn't have cancelled them, because I wouldn't have wanted to let them down, yeah. and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have wanted to miss out, and yeah, so I made a choice at that point that... Yes, I'm going to miss out, but it's not it's not life threatening. You know, I'm catching up with friends. I can catch up next week or the you know in a month's time or whatever. And but my health is more important than anything else because if I don't get on top of this now, I'm not going to be able to function at work it's next be long week. Long term, and, yeah. and, I, and I guess so. There are a few things there, um, lessons to take away. Absolutely, this is, is one. It's difficult because again being part of a tribe is inbuilt within us yep. so FOMO is a thing yep uh, however much we say or get over it it is a thing but you you have to decide whether that FOMO is is permanent or just temporary mm -hmm. and whether you can catch up with it later two that if your behaviors are congruent with um curated behaviors that you're seeing then they're probably not the best behaviors for you mm. to exemplify and three to plan the breaks regularly mm -hmm. so that you don't find yourself in a position where you're looking back on the last few weeks and those triggers and berating yourself yeah um, because at that point it's too late yeah so assume that it's always going to be too late yeah assume that um, any break you take is too late mm -hmm. and plan them in and, and plan factor them in, them in. and yeah. you will be you'll have more energy mm -hmm. you'll be, you know you'll be recharged you'll have time to think um, all the magic happens when you're not at work mm -hmm. I know that you know it, it, you'll go on holiday and you, you, you'll, you'll, that's where you'll have the ideas because you're not in the business yeah. so if, if you're dealing with the kind of guilt thing oh I shouldn't be away from the business mm -hmm. see it as a business um asset that actually what you're doing is you're planning time to build the business yeah. and factoring it as part of the business cycle yeah you know Kay and I have a very clear agreement that when we when we go away the first two weeks including the drive sorry the first two days so we go away for months and then, <laughs> for the first two days plus um, the drive up there or the journey is that we have all the conversations that we want about the business. Mm -hmm. And then for the next three, four, five days, we don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. And then that gives it time to kind of drop. Yep. And then the last day or so, we'll start having conversations about that and what's come through and what's filtered out. Yeah. And it's great. So we get really good time for ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also an opportunity to unload, to ask ourselves, you know, what was good, what could have been better, how could it have been better, what we do differently next term, all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And really think strategically about um, yeah. what, what we're trying to do and that I believe is healthy yeah and and I, I would just add on top of that is whether you have a chronic illness or not if you keep pushing yourself your body at some point will go enough enough's enough you have yeah. to rest yeah for your own health but also for your business health you have to take a break you have to stop at some point and if you plan those in is going to be a lot healthier and a lot better for both you and your business than if you are forced to take that rest. 100%. Cool. Um, as always, if you if you find that difficult to take time off, mm. we'd love to know if you feel guilty about it or it's... You're not alone. I think a lot of people a find lot it lot really people difficult do. to take time yeah, off. We'd love to know. Yeah. Cool. See you next week. Yes, definitely.